I am Graham Campbell, uh, SMP Socialist co convener, and we are here again to talk about yet another not very eventful week with my co convener, Janice Wilson. Good morning. So, what happened this week? Um, I think one of our MSPs met someone quite controversial the other day. Really? Um, I never noticed that. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you, you were about to talk about a certain Angus Robertson, would you? Yeah. What a, oh, yeah. What Culture a... and external relations, and they extended the hand too externally to a certain Israeli deputy ambassador. Yeah. Um, so what was that about? Um, well, it certainly did nothing for um, the party. Um, he wanted, he, he, asked, he, he asked for a ceasefire, which is commendable. Um, he also spoke about extending relationships between the two countries. I mean, what? Israel are in the middle of committing a genocide. Um, Israel are wanted for war crimes. Um, what was he thinking? What was he thinking? Well, wearing your uh, SNP friends of Palestine hat, what have they said about it? Oh, I mean, we've just we've released a statement um, condemning it in the, in the harshest way we can, um, re reiterating our unwavering support for Palestine. Um, demanding the party support the ICC with the arrest warrant, um, demanding an apology from from the party for the whole thing happening that just should never have happened. The secrecy surrounding it, the yeah, the the lack of transparency. I think. Well, obviously, it's, it's, well, sorry to interrupt. I'm saying no, that no, one no. of obvious things to say is that the key position that a lot of the campaigners around Palestine and Gaza have is the way to respond and if you're a citizen of a western country like we are is get you boycott divestment and sanctions and obviously yes. boycott means not dignifying these people with the status of of a normal country because they're not a normal country no normal country commits a genocide on this scale and calls it normal to kill civilians in the way they do and and thinks it's okay to you know bring their orchestras here to the Edinburgh Festival or something as if it's some kind of normal. It's not normal. This is not a normal country, not a normal government, and it shouldn't not, be detained. Not only are they committing genocide, they're being enabled to commit genocide. Hmm. We're what? participating in their war crimes by supplying them with weapons and so on. So it, you know these in, these are important things that the government you know, we quite rightly held a very strong stance on this throughout the whole crisis over this last year. And this obviously undermines that by, and I, I don't know if the government agreed to this. And obviously, you, I'll play the counterfactual slightly. It's obviously the case that the Israelis may have asked for this meeting and they could, they could have and should have said no. But if you were going to call them in to tell them, stop killing, stop committing genocide, then you should publicly do that. You should have just publicly called them in and said, look, you Yo, Ambassador, come in. We're coming into telling you off. Stop killing the people in Gaza. Stop killing the people in the West Bank. Stop bombing the neighbouring countries and causing a regional war. That would have been a reasonable thing to do, but then you'd go public with that. You would just publicly say, call them in. We're going to tell you off. Come in for your telling off. Not this yeah. by secrecy, and then it sneaks, sneaks out, and then you kind of don't admit to it. No, that's just not right. So I hope that there is an apology for that, and also a, a policy adopted by the government that they will not have any meetings with Israeli officials yeah. until, until this war stops. You know. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it, the yeah. It, the the fact that it happened is bad enough. The fact that they tried to hush it up is is even worse. And I do believe that we on our side didn't publicise anything they did. Um, and I think you spoke about propaganda before, Graham. I mean, it is the perfect propaganda here, isn't it? Look, look, they're meeting us. They think we're normal. They support us. We don't. We unequivocally, at SNP Friends of Palestine, are absolutely aghast at this, that this even happened. It's it's incredible. Incredible. It, it's upset a lot of people. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if it dealt with at the conference agenda in uh, a few weeks' time. And actually... Moving neatly onto that one, uh, SNP yeah. conference agenda is out, and uh, the structure of it has been curtailed a bit because we, we've we've got a day where we're going to discuss uh, our election results, which is a 
reasonable thing to do. We've had lots of meetings across the country to do that. And so there will be a sort of national coming together with delegates to talk about that. But obviously, the rest of the conference agenda is, is tighter now because government ministers are going to give four, three or four themed talks during the course of the thing to talk about okay. what we're actually doing. And that's actually not so helpful because it means that we've got less time to talk about topicals. There's also some important stuff on ch climate change which we're trying to get on the agenda and which is, you know, last two conferences we've, you know, had references back to try and prevent this pro fossil fuel argument yeah. from creeping back in. And there seems to be a concerted effort, whoever's on the conference at, at committee, of not picking that up. So yet again, we've got a motion arguing for similar politics, which two consecutive conferences have rejected. Uh, and we may have to grab control of the agenda to, reverse this again and yeah. properly have time for motions this time Th that's somewhat frustrating that you know we, we've realized we know we're going to have new officers at the top you know the elections are on for internal positions we're going to have a new national secretary frankly good because i think the last one we've had last few we've had have not really tackled the the problems in the party with the full weight that they need to uh so whoever we get it's really important that they, we get we elect somebody good to be national secretary and properly enforce the party's policies and rules, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You're going to be at conference? Yep. Yep. Got my delegates passed. Yeah. Jack's right. the whole I'll, full be doing, I'll, I'll be doing the Friends of Palestine map and Palestine Solidarity campaign stall as well. And there's a fringe meeting on the Saturday, I believe. Yes, for that. there is. So, um, yeah, come along to that because I'm sure the conversation will be quite heated and um, quite rightly so. Will that be on Saturday lunchtime or afternoon? I think it's at 4.30, but I need to double check. Afternoon, great. I'll be able to make that because at 12.30, the S&P Bain Network is holding an anti-racism uh, um, fringe meeting. Core Cap okay. Stewart is speaking. We've got somebody from Show Race and the Red Card, somebody from um, CREA, the Coalition for Racial Equality and Rights. And we're going to have a round the chat about you know the threat of racism in Scotland and how to handle it. Um, that's important because, of course, that's in the context of the racist riots and the sentencing that have just going taken yep. place. Um, noticing how heavy that you know, still the riots haven't happened in Scotland. Good because the public has turned out in serious numbers to prevent it happening, so they haven't dared show their face yet. But uh, there's still this mantra in the media about UK riots because they happened in Belfast and and England. But really, it's English riots and English riots by racists. And it's interesting to see how the the justice system can suddenly do so quick, send people to jail where they belong. Good. Why can't they do that when they're attacking black people normally or attacking women in the way they do? Why, you know, rape victims will be looking at this and thinking, hang on, <laughs> hello, why can't you do that for us yeah. or for perpetrators that have been attacking us? So the system can do it when it wants to. The fact that it doesn't do this in normal circumstances, tells you everything you need to know about their respect for our human rights and dignity. Yeah. But uh, this frustration I have as well, that the word Islamophobia is still not being used yeah. by the Labour government to describe what these, is behind these race riots. There's some talk, Neil Basu, interestingly, used to be the head of counterterrorism in the Met Police. He quite rightly says that what Nigel Farage has been saying in public about, uh, uh, you know, has been fermenting and citing Right, you know, it's you know he should be being prosecuted. I'd like to see it happen. I mean, the, the Labour Party are Islamophobic to their core. I mean, there's there's no doubt about that. But a couple of things I picked up on about the race riots is, yeah, the sentences have been swift and they've been dealt with and they've been handed out, but they're not. A lot of them aren't particularly long sentences. So, for example, the just stop oil people just for thinking about protesting got much longer sentences than some of the actual racists who were protesting. And another point that I read this morning about one of the judges when sentencing them spoke about, and he was sentencing two gentlemen, one who had already been convicted for over 100 crimes and one for over 70. And he pointed out that if they're protesting because of taxpayers' money, why, aren't, you know, why are they constantly being sent to prison, which costs taxpayers a lot more than it costs to house refugees? Um, so you see, you know, the kind of undercurrent there that they're they're absolutely right, Graham. They're they're Islamophobic, they're racist, they're mainly against Muslims, and they're pogroms, like you quite rightly pointed out. They're they're pogroms. Um 
And, you know, to condense it all is just, you know, and to say the race riots across the UK, that's letting them off with, you know, what the real intention of these things are. It's it's racist people coming out and protesting against Muslims. Well, I have to say, as a, as a veteran anti-racism campaign, this is probably, my, in my lifetime, that's my fourth wave of fascist uh, up, uprisings against black people. Yeah. Um, but off, off, you know, but they are race racist riots. We've experienced racist riots where we've had to defend ourselves over time, maybe from Enoch Powell or whoever it was. But there's a track record of this. Racist politicians, mainstream ones, stoke up the flames. It gets a far-right reaction, which leads to the physical injury and death of black and Asian people. Uh, and it, then, then when we respond, that's called a riot. And the, actually, what that is is a, a, a uprising against oppression. And yeah. that, frankly, it's only when we uprise against oppression that something gets done about racism. Then suddenly laws come in. You know, until you know, unless we threaten to defend ourselves, then suddenly the law comes down hard. And I notice in Leeds, two anti-racist protesters who whose community was attacked by these far, far right uh, Nazis. Um, have been sentenced to sentences the same as them for defending themselves. Right? This is an absolute injustice. It reminds you of all the cases like the Bradford 12 and all the other very famous uh, miscarriages of justice, which led to people being jailed for resisting, you know, in Southall yeah. and at London, all them places. So don't get this idea that the, the justice system is suddenly uh, now anti-racist. It's not. It's, it's going to potentially criminalise uh, you know, resistance to racism as well. So please, when you're on these demonstrations, please be on your guard, protect each other. Let's still do our job and go out there, be on the demonstrations and make no space for those fascists to go out in the streets. But there needs to be also a campaign to support the, the Just Stop Oil people because they are yeah, unjustly imprisoned. They haven't done anything wrong. Uh, the criminals who should be behind bars are the ones in the boardrooms in suits, not the ones yeah. in orange. Oh, I'm getting all the high holes there, but uh, <laughs> you know, so you might uh, you think I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling it all here, gentlemen. Anyway, but that that is twelve minutes up, so we better stop, otherwise this podcast gets too long. So okay. next week I'll see you again, and hopefully nothing more will happen next week. No, hopefully it's a quiet week. See you then. Bye, just now. <laughs>